Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here to the Launchpad and our live launch coverage of Starlink 2-5 launching from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name's Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad, and here at TLP, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together, and we're glad to have you joining us here today. If it's your first time here, take a moment. Let us know in the chat. Everyone, let us know where you're watching from. And make sure you take a moment to engage that like button and share out the stream as we count down now 8 minutes, 45 seconds, and counting until liftoff of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX is gone live, so we're going to listen into them right away here. But as always, you can head on over to tlpnetwork.com and check out today's mission briefing. We can learn more about today, the rocket, the payload, and even watch today's stream. See the history of the booster. Today's booster is Booster 1063 going for its ninth mission. Uh, for today, it's going to be landing uh, on a course I still love you stationed out in the Pacific Ocean. So take a moment and check out that uh, mission briefing there today. And uh, we're trying to make sure we remember it. It is launch day, so you can always get 10% off over on the Launchpad store. We're getting ready for the Starship Orbital test uh, and uh, lots of options there. Global shipping available, so definitely take a moment and check that out. Today is a double launch day, so we've got Starlink 2-5 this afternoon, and then we have an Inara sat launch later today, so we hope you'll join us back for that live later today. As always, we're going to be answering questions throughout today's stream. You can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad, and we'll work on answering those live uh, throughout today's launch phase. And once we hear from SpaceX Mission Control, we are going to be uh, listening into them for an update on today's uh, rocket, the range. Starlink deployment scheduled 15 minutes, 22 seconds into today's flight. Uh, and it is, of course, as I said, landing over on the drone ship. But great to have so many people joining us here today. I see many people around the world tuning in. Great to have you. we got Louisiana. I know we've got uh, Glasgow. We've got Minnesota, New York, North Texas, Orlando, Finland. Great having you all here. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, and keep sending in those questions by taking us at the launch pad. If you want to be part of a great space community, consider joining us over on the TLP Discord. It's free to join, and we'll drop the link in the chat for you guys there. Uh, we hang out in there pretty much every day. There's chats, there's voice comms, uh, and sometimes even watch parties for different launches, and we'd love to have you join us for one of those. If you're a TLP member and helping support what we do, there is a behind the scenes area where you get early video access, get to ask questions for upcoming interviews, uh, and a bunch of new stuff coming in the very near future, as well as discounted merch. So again, thank you to all of our members. You help us do what we can do. We're waiting for SpaceX to uh, start up their live stream here, uh, wait for any of those live views of the pad. But today's mission is Starlink 2-5, carrying 51 more Starlink satellites into orbit, into that second shell of the constellation, Starlink constellation. Uh, and that is what we will be seeing here today. I see a question from uh, Billy coming in. What numbers of Starlink sats do we have up there now and how many to go roughly? So we don't have a final number of what they're going to be launching. That's still something that's kind of up in the air waiting for approval. We've heard up to 10,000, 14,000 um, satellites. So there's going to be quite a few. We are over 3,000, I believe now. Uh, so we are uh, well on our way there, but they do need Starship to come online to be able to have Starlink's constellation successful. They have a deadline of getting half of their first set of the constellation up by a point in 2024 and the remainder by 2027. Uh, and the only way for them to reach that is using Starship. It would be near impossible with Falcon 9, but they are using Falcon 9 as much as they can. 105 Falcon 9 missions scheduled this year, uh, and a majority of those being Starlink, but quite a few customer missions crew missions, cargo to the ISS, and more as well. You can see SpaceX is getting underway, so we're going to listen into SpaceX Mission Control as we get started, as we count down five minutes and counting until liftoff. And happy Friday. My name is Zachary Lupin, and I'm an avionics reliability engineer here at SpaceX. I'll be your host for today's Starlink mission, which marks SpaceX's 11th launch of the year and 210th overall mission to date. For those of you following the Starlink program, Starlink is now available in 47 countries and 59 markets around the world. And today we are sending another 51 Starlink satellites to orbit. 
Currently, weather and range are both green for launch, and we are proceeding with a T-0 time of 11.12 a.m. Pacific time from Vandenberg Space Force Base at Pad 4 East. The teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or spacecraft. We should see those strong back arms opening up here shortly. And there you can see them going. Coming up next at T minus three minutes, we should hear that stage one has completed liquid oxygen loading. Sitting adjacent to the Falcon 9 rocket is the transporter erector, or TE, which is the truss structure next to the rocket that is used for rollout and to route propellants and electrical power to the vehicle in preparation for launch. The weather at Vandenberg Space Force Station is currently looking pretty darn clear today. If you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. We're at T minus three minutes, 13 seconds and counting until liftoff of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The range is go, the weather is go, and the vehicle is as well. You can see strong back retract has occurred there. Now three minutes and counting until liftoff. The next major milestone will be Falcon going into startup and beginning that very final part of the countdown. On board, 51 Starlink satellites preparing to join the Starlink constellation in low Earth orbit. Today's Falcon 9 booster, booster 1063-9, going for its ninth flight and will attempt to land on, of course, I Still Love You, which is stationed downrange in the Pacific Ocean. Again, this is Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, uh, looking off to the west into the Pacific Ocean. If you happen to be in the Los Angeles region uh, and can head outside, now is your about one minute warning. Uh, you may be able to see today's flight. As we get into the final two minutes of the count at the launch pad, we always do a go, no go of our chat. So we'll see that uh, in the chat there. And let's listen in to Mission Control as we go into the final two minutes of countdown until liftoff of Starlink 2-5. Stage two, lock load complete. And there's that call out of stage two lock load completion. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with one million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. The booster you see on your screen is flying for the ninth time today, having previously supported the Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich mission, the NASA DART mission, and six Starlink missions. After liftoff and stage separation, the booster is scheduled to land on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Reusability allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space access. Coming up next, we should hear that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means the rocket is on internal power. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is now in startup and the rocket is on internal power. LD is go for launch. And as you just heard, the launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. Let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 51 Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds. At 
T plus 35 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Launch Complex 4 East at 11.12 a.m. Pacific Time. Hour and telemetry nominal. Vehicle is supersonic. There's that call out that Falcon 9 is supersonic. This means the vehicle is currently going faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. This means that the vehicle is currently experiencing the greatest amount of external stresses as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Back chill. And we are about one minute away from a series of events, MECO, Stage SEP, SES-1, and Fairing Separation. MECO, or Main Engine Cutoff, is where all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage shut down. Stage Separation is when the first and second stages separate. SES-1, or Second Engine Start-1, is where we light the Merlin vacuum on the second stage. And Fairing Separation is when the two fairing halves separate and fall away from the second stage. Keep an eye out for these events, which will happen in rapid succession. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Bearing separation confirmed. And there we heard those callouts for main engine cutoff, stage separation, SES-1, and fairing separation. We will be attempting to recover both fairing halves today using our recovery vessel NRC Quest. Both of the fairing halves flying on today's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for the fifth time and the other its sixth. And just as a reminder, on the left side of the screen is the Falcon 9 first stage, and on the right side you can see the second stage, which is carrying the Starlink satellites. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the launch pad. You're looking at a live view of the first and second stage of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The first stage making its way up to its apogee before descending back down for a recovery attempt on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. The second stage continuing on its way to get ready to deploy the 51 Starlink satellites into the second shell of the Starlink constellation. On the right side of your screen, that's a live look at the telemetry of the first and second stage, giving you an idea of how it is uh, leaving the west coast of the United States, uh, having flown now over uh, past Los Angeles, heading down uh, along the western seaboard of Mexico. The first stage now coming up to its point of apogee, and the second stage continuing now well up to 150 kilometers and increasing, coming up to 10,000 kilometers an hour. We're going to keep listening into Mission Control. The next major milestones we're going to be seeing are with the first stage, as it will perform a entry burn uh, to help provide... Uh, some safety to the booster to protect it from the overheating while it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, and then landing burn. At the same time as landing burn, uh, we will see SECO-1, that is the shutoff of the second stage's engine, uh, as it uh, has reached a stable orbit at that point. A second burn generally is required, but it looks like we are not going to be needing one to get into our orbit here today, so payload deployment expected 15 minutes, 22 seconds into today's flight. Black Widow, thank you so much for that super chat. Appreciate the support there. Thank you so much. Now, five minutes into flight, uh, about a minute and a half away from that entry burn, uh, as the first stage is now beginning its descent. You can see its altitude falling and speed increasing as it begins its journey back down to Earth. Second stage continuing to perform well, now traveling over 12,000 kilometers an hour, altitude 188 kilometers.
to provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. And just as a reminder, on the left side of your screen is the Falcon 9 first stage, which is coming back to Earth to perform its landing. And the second stage, with the Merlin vacuum engine visible, is on the right. Both vehicles are still following nominal trajectories. Stage one, entry burn, start up. There's that call out for the stage one entry burn. Stage one, which we also call the booster, has ignited engines one, five, and nine to slow it down for atmospheric reentry. The first stage used to launch our 51 Starlink satellites into space today is flying for its ninth time stage today. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. Having stage one, FTS has saved. Having previously supported the Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich mission, the NASA DART mission, and six Starlink missions. And you heard that call out that the entry burn on the first stage has also completed. Stage two, FTS has saved. Stage one is transonic. And there you heard that the first stage is now transonic, which means it is traveling near the speed of sound. Terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. And there's confirmation that the stage one landing burn has started in preparation for touchdown on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Stage one landing like deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you heard and saw that Falcon 9 has successfully landed on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. This marks our 172nd overall landing of an orbital class rocket, including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. Nominal orbit insertion. And if you heard that call out, we had nominal orbital insertion of our Starlink satellites. And with confirmation. And you're looking at a live view of, of course, I still love you, where the first stage has touched down nine minutes, 25 seconds into flight. We're going to keep watching this as payload deployment is just a couple of minutes away. But if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by taking us at the launch pad. And we'll work on answering those over the next few minutes as we await confirmation of payload deployment. If it's your first time here, though, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage, space briefing, space news update, or exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview right here on the launch pad. Here at TLP, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together, and we're glad to have you here with us today. Make sure you're following us over on Twitter, on Reddit, and consider joining us on the TLP Discord. It's free to join, and it's where our awesome space community hangs out when we are not here on a live stream. This is the first of two launches here today. We hope you'll join us later today for the launch of Inmarasat 6, launching from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Uh, as always, if you want to know more about upcoming missions, you can do so by checking out tlpnetwork.com launches. 
that is where we have our live launch calendar and you can stay up to every update on everything and see detailed mission briefings about upcoming missions which boosters are going to be used and whether we will have live coverage uh, there as well so make sure you're checking that out tlpnetwork.com launches for all your upcoming launches and if you've missed a launch we do have previous as well and you can see uh, historical mission briefings as well and we're glad to have that but now uh, coming up about four minutes away from payload deployment confirmation of 51 starlink satellites into low earth orbit again if you guys have questions you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad and we'll work on answering those as we await for payload deployment confirmation Should just be a couple of minutes from now. Just making sure we've got that audio patched in there. There we go. At Thor TLP Discord is a place to be. It's a pretty great community there. Our corner is asking if we know if ULA is going to be doing a wet dress before their launch day. We did hear uh, that they were going to be rolling Vulcan out to the pad uh, in the very near future. Uh, most likely sometime next week ahead of a launch attempt. Uh, so they will be doing testing with Vulcan out at the pad uh, prior to a launch. Uh, whether or not we will actually be able to have live coverage of that or not, we're still waiting to hear. We're working with Cape Canaveral on getting our team accredited to be on site. But this is a military uh, base, a Space Force base. Uh, so it takes some time to get our teams on there. But uh, we are working on that to bring you guys that coverage in the near future as there is a lot of stuff launching from the Cape Canaveral side this year. How many hours before the next launch? Uh, Jason is asking. We are T minus eight hours, 33 minutes, 55 seconds and counting until liftoff of Inmara sat from Florida. So uh, that live stream is already scheduled. When this live stream ends, it'll actually send you on over there. But one thing we want to do uh, as well is if you guys do have time, uh, consider heading on over after the launch and check out our interview where we sat down with Jeremy Graber, the Artemis One Assistant Launch Director. He took us inside Mission Control for a deep look at what it was like through the rehearsals, the wet dress, that critical tanking test, as well as actual launch day, uh, and gave us uh, an inside look on what that was all like. So we appreciate that time, Jeremy. Definitely check out that interview. Uh, it's uh, amazing everything that uh, we got to learn from Jeremy about Artemis One. And we even talked a little bit about Artemis Two, so definitely check that out. Now two minutes until deployment of 51 more Starlink satellites. Jeremy, another launch tonight. Yes, we've got another one launching uh, this evening from Slick 40 in Florida. Uh, coming up on the launch schedule to keep you up to date, we've got Starlink 6-1 scheduled for the 23rd. We also have the launch of the Soyuz MS-23 rescue mission uh, from Roscosmos. Uh, launching from Kazakhstan on the 23rd. We have Crew 6 launching on the 26th. Uh, and then we have uh, a number of more missions. We're also counting down to the launch of the cargo resupply mission launching on March 10th. So a very busy time at the International Space Station. Progress is undocking tonight. We've got the rescue Soyuz coming up, the Crew 6 launch, Crew 5 departure, cargo arrival, and then cargo departure. So a very busy time aboard the International Space Station. Now coming up just one minute away from Starlink deployment. Just listening into Mission Control comms for that confirmation. Uh, Broken saying Vandenberg's looking busy with launches until summer. Vandenberg is very busy uh, as well. Uh, it was something that we didn't see for a number of years. You know, a few launches a year, but now with Falcon 9, uh, with a number of boosters being housed at Vandenberg, we're seeing that turnaround occurring uh, a lot more frequently. So uh, lots of launches coming out of the Los Angeles area at Vandenberg. Great opportunity to uh, get to see some Falcon 9s fly if you happen to be in that area. If you did happen to be in the area today and you caught photos or videos of today's launch, make sure you tag us on Twitter at TLPN underscore official or drop it over on our Reddit. Links are in the description uh, for both of those and uh, for a chance to be featured over on our social media um, or even on an upcoming live stream as well. So definitely check that out. Ricardo's asking, how many engines does the booster have? So the first stage of Falcon 9 has uh, nine engines, and the second stage has one. We should be waiting for confirmation of deployment now. But it may be so they don't have ground station coverage. 
because they are in the middle of the ocean. We'll wait to see for that confirmation. We do not receive in the next minute or two. We'll wait for confirmation via social media. But if it was your first time here, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad here at TLP Network. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we are glad to have you joining us for our live launch coverage of Starlink 2-5 from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Space in Florida. We're now counting down to the next launch. Uh, launching later tonight in Marasat 6 F2, launching on another Falcon 9 from Slick 4D at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We'll hope you'll join us live for that. Here at the Launchpad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. So make sure you engage that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage, space briefing, space news update, or exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. But this is going to wrap up our live launch coverage of Starlink 2-5. Stay tuned to our social media for confirmation of deployment, which should have occurred just over a minute ago. Uh, and that's going to do it for us here today. But from the TLP headquarters studios, I'll see you next time.